Welcome back to the channel, guys. Last week, I shot a video showing you guys this finished space, but I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into one particular issue that I was very, very concerned about on this job, and that was wood expansion and contraction. In this space, we have two miles, literally 10,000 linear feet of pine number two TNG car siding. Whenever you have that much wood covering a large space, you can have absolute disasters with expansion especially. If you get a high humidity event or just high humidity in general in a space like this over such a large area, that wood is going to expand and if it doesn't have anywhere else to go, it's gonna buckle, meaning it's gonna actually start to have to dive down and bend because it doesn't have any room to stretch. So I wanted to dive into what I did to control that on this particular project. Now, what you see behind me is a massive cathedral ceiling, and it had me very concerned because if this has to grow over such a large area, it could buckle. So the first thing I did when we were starting this space was have a phone call with the builder who in turn had a phone call with the homeowner, letting them know that we were about to do something that could possibly have some bad long-term effects if the space isn't managed well. Obviously this is a quote unquote garage. There are garage doors on it and it is also a conditioned space. Problem is, if it's not treated like a conditioned space and humidity gets very high in here and that wood starts to grow a lot, we could have problems. So step number one was having very clear and informed conversations about what could happen if humidity is not controlled. So the builder and homeowner both understood and agreed to sign off on the TNG all the way across this entire space which is obviously a ton. It's all the way up there in the loft ceiling as well, and down here on this ceiling. So then it's up to me to come up with solutions on how I can mitigate any potential damage or issues down the road by high humidity. The first thing I did before we did anything, we had the material delivered to the job site and I did a moisture test on all of the material to figure out what the actual moisture content was at the time of our installation. Now in this case, I actually wanted the moisture content to be very high in the wood. The reason is we were gonna pre-stain all the tongues on this, so if it shrinks, it's no big deal. But if it expands, I've got problems. So I wanted it to be really high. Testing it, it actually was very high coming from the mill. So I wanted to get it installed as quickly as possible while it was expanded so that I was controlling that movement as much as possible. The worst thing that we could have done would have been to install a huge ceiling like this with the material being super dry and in the winter because once summer comes around, it's gonna absorb more moisture and it's gonna grow and that's where we're gonna have problems. So we determined moisture content is high in the wood at the time of installation, which is a good thing. If it would have been very low, I would have actually explored options to humidify the wood before installing it because it's that big a deal over such a large space. But we were looking pretty good. The next step is to look at how can we strategically install this stuff so that it has room to grow so that we eliminate the issue of buckling. Meaning if we have a high humidity event, do I have enough space on the ends of this stuff so that it can expand without it buckling? Now this is where the details come in on a space like this that nobody knows about after the fact and nobody notices after the fact. But this is what separates a good installer subcontractor from the rest. A lot of guys, builder would say, hey, put all this stuff on the ceiling. They would come and install it. They'd install it tight with no forethought for expansion and contraction, no concern at all. They'd take their paycheck and run, and next summer there'd be massive issues and everyone just shrugs their shoulders. So 
we're trying to think ahead and that's part of what sets us apart is having these conversations with the builder and showing them what we're doing to cover them, us, and the homeowner to, from future issues down the road. So I'm gonna take you around and show you about a handful of strategic things you can do, different details that you can do to give yourself space so that this stuff can move. Let's just start right here with this wall that's got the metal on it. You'll notice we've got a big J trim across the top. That J trim is covering a gap all the way around the perimeter so that our TNG material is off the wall. So if it needs to move, there's room for it to move that way and this way. So we've removed the possibility of buckling in this area by keeping it off the wall and then covering that space with other details. And you'll notice over here at the end, as we come up to this beam detail, we've got another J trim again where there's room for expansion contraction now this is end grain right here so it's not going to move nearly as much this way the movement is all going to happen this way now we come over here to our mural wall which is awesome you'll notice we've got this trim frame all the way around again this last board of tng was left off the wall with an expansion space so that it can move in and out where this piece of trim is here. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Spencer, but wait a minute, isn't that gonna show raw wood if this stuff is moving around? Well, any area where we thought we could have movement, we pre-stained it. So we had stain on site at the time that we were installing the raw material and anything that was gonna be going under a piece of trim or something like that, we pre-stained. We also pre-stained all of the tongues. That way, if this shrinks in the winter, you're not gonna see a line of raw wood in that tongue and groove space. Pre-staining is essential in those situations. Let's move around here. Again, room for expansion there. Again, up here, it's tucked up into this metal beam, so there's space there for it to move. Space around the perimeter here. This is where it gets tricky out here. You'll notice we've got a brick to wood connection right here. Now I ripped this bottom piece at a bevel and we kept that off of the wall about three quarters of an inch. That way it's got room to go down. And then this brick does go up to it. Uh, we, we instructed the mason to allow, to keep that space open that this could move right there. We did the same type of detail at the top. We ran all this up first, left a big space, and then on that flat portion up there, we beveled it and went over the top. So this whole big area right here, it has a lot of room to grow so that hopefully buckling doesn't happen. You've also got to look at the size and scale of the areas where you're installing. So this is a big area. This flat area at the top is much narrower. So any potential movement is gonna be much smaller right here. By installing this side first and leaving a space so that it can grow, then we put in this middle section and on our end piece, we've got a bevel. We pre-stained the other piece that it was gonna butt into. That way, if this does move, that bevel is gonna slide down this board and it's not gonna be a big deal. It's gonna have somewhere to go. So again, we've taken buckling out of the equation. As we get up here to our loft ceiling, we've got a few different things going on. So obviously we've got the transition from our wood ceiling to brick right here. The wood ceiling goes through and there's a space between the wood and the wall, again, so it can move in and out. Unfortunately, the brick is grouted uh, to the wood siding and this is again where it comes down to like, we really need to try to keep this space conditioned so that we minimize the wood movement. Because if this is constantly having huge humidity swings, it could potentially become an issue with that connection between the brick mortar and the TNG. Now, as we come around here, 
Around the perimeter, you'll notice we've got a wood scribe trim that goes all the way around. So in a situation like this, where we come down and meet the wall at the bottom, again, we have a space on our bottom piece between it and the wall, and then we've covered that space with a wood trim going around the perimeter, which is pretty low key and it looks pretty decent in my opinion. Alrighty, now last area here. What are we gonna do with this large ceiling area in this garage, overhead garage door area? This was a big enough area I felt we needed to break it up and actually put an expansion joint down the center kind of like you would with drywall in a garage to kind of break that space up so it's got more mo room to move into the middle as well as the outside. The other thing we had to take into consideration is that with these overhead garage door brackets, they were gonna be lagging those brackets into the ceiling, which would essentially be locking that row of car siding in place. So it would not be able to move. So we strategically put our control joint at that area. Now that this ceiling is all stained up, you can't even hardly notice it. But there is a wood trim that's a little bit lower, probably a quarter inch to three eighths lower, going down the center right here. In between two pieces of TNG, there's probably a one inch gap in between there. So that gives both sides room to grow into that gap if needed. Again, our primary concern is that we want to eliminate buckling. Now, aside from this expansion joint, if we go to the end, you'll notice I've got a scribe trim across the end as well. That is because there's a gap right there where it meets this side wall. And then over here, we actually undercut this garage door two by frame so that our ceiling could slide up over across the top of that to again, give room for expansion on the end. So I hope you guys have found this information helpful. As trim subcontractors and trim carpenters, we have to be thinking ahead. We can't always just come in guns blazes, guns blazing, slap some stuff on the wall and call it good enough. Many times there can be major consequences down the road. Always take wood expansion and contraction into account on your installations. A lot of times we're asked to do things that are not ideal, that are not perfect scenarios, but we have to do the best that we can with the requests that are given to us and sometimes get things signed off on. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. This space turned out amazing. I love it. I think the homeowners are gonna love it. And as long as we keep that humidity somewhat in check in here, I think we'll have a good looking project for a very long time.